Today's topic of discussion, can a meme weapon be good? Well, we're going to learn about it, but first, we're going to talk about Ironbreaker. His passive ability, Gromril Armor, completely absorbs one hit every 20 seconds. A man can tank. His career skill, impenetrable. Barden taunts all nearby man-sized enemies, gains increased defense, and can block any attack for the next 10 seconds. The man can tank. He's also Dwarf Forged, reduces damage taken by 30%. The man can tank. Dotty gains an extra stamina shield and resilient, decreases stun duration after getting hit by an attack by 50%. I am using the Cog Hammer as the weapon today, which is going to require Rock Breaker, aka Staggering Enemies, for THP. Um, the Cog Hammer is really good. It's got quick, kind of diagonal, um, you know, side to side light attacks. Very good for gaining temp health and kind of dealing with hordes. And then it's got these. Um, cool choppy overheads that can deal with elites, so you can even take killing blows for temp health if you really want to. Just depends um, how you want to get your temp health. Do you want it from hordes on a more consistent basis, or do you want it uh, scattered throughout elites and whatnot? Yeah, the choice is really yours. I think I'm a stagger kind of guy. Down here on his second line, you don't need under pressure because you're not taking a drake weapon. Brunette shield doesn't really kind of makes sense with the cog hammer so the only choice really on this line is blood of grimnir which is each ally increases power by five each nearby ally increases power by five percent this um, is a buff for you a little power boost so when you're near your team you get 15 percent increased power which is pretty nice especially if you're going to be doing some melee damage it's pretty good on this line i never rec never recommend anyone ever take bulwark it's just bad even for shields it's just not good God damn it, loner. <laughs> and we are going to be dealing with the Trollhammer Torpedo today, so you could take enhanced power for a little bit extra damage, but personally I think Smiter is a better choice. Smiter lets you do a lot of melee damage and kill things pretty quickly with your melee weapon. And the Trollhammer already does plenty of damage, so I don't think you really need enhanced power for it. On this line, um, I don't think you really need Vengeance, just because the weapon itself is fast enough, but if you want that extra attack speed, sure. You know, go for vengeance, it's fine. But I think the more practical use is Gromril Curse. When Gromril Armor is removed, all nearby enemies are knocked back. So this kind of gives you a little bit of life insurance against assassins and hook rats. If an assassin jumps you and you have this up, they'll immediately bounce off you, which will save your life, which is, you know, excellent. If a hook rat grabs you and then another enemy hits you while you're being hooked, uh, you will be freed and everything will be knocked back. So that's really cool. And then there's even Tunnel Fighter, which is pretty good as well. It doesn't do the knockback, but it um, the, reduces the cooldown, cuts it in half to 10 seconds. So you basically get to take no damage every 10 seconds, um, which is pretty awesome. So if you get hit a lot, I kind of would recommend Tunnel Fighter. If you're more worried about specials, Gromro Curse. If you just like to swing, 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 <laughs> Vengeance. Down here, Dolly Defiance is cool. If you're going to be blocking a lot, it's not a bad talent at all. I just don't know that it really goes so good with the Cog Hammer. And the same kind of thing for Miner's Rhythm. You're not really going to be blocking too much with it. You're not really going to be doing a whole lot of push attacks with it. I think the better choice here is the Rolling Mountain. Killing enemies with melee attacks while on full stamina reduces the cooldown of Impenetrable by 2%. That's correct. Every kill will give you 2% off your ult, which goes excellently with Drink Browsy Oath. Impenetrable increases the power of nearby allies by 20% for 10 seconds. So this will give you and the entire team, if they're you know within a, the range of your ult, 20% um, extra power, which is a lot, a lot of damage. And if they're near you, of course, you also have Blood of Grimnir, which is 15%, so potentially a 35% boost to your own personal power, which is pretty nice if you're going to be swing, swing, swinging with the Cog Hammer. There's other talents down here. Booming Taunt is a good one. Increases the radiance of impenetrable taunt by 15%, increases the duration to 15 seconds. So a longer taunt, a bigger taunt, this is like... God damn it, loner. Increases the radius of impenetrable... <laughs> you got me all fucked up now. It's a bigger taunt, it's a longer taunt, it's good for pulling hordes, if you want to do that kind of thing, patrols even. Um, 
not a huge fan of Oiwazik anymore. I used to really like this one because uh, you could taunt monsters, but after playing longer, you know, you, you can kind of mess up a bounty hunter. You can kind of mess up people that are like a piercing shot waste stalker that are trying to kind of focus on headshots because you just pull that aggro. I mean, I guess it would have some practical uses, but I think it's more likely to mess up your teammates than anything else. So personally, I like the drink rather than the oath because of the power. And now for the gear. The melee weapon today is the Cog Hammer. I run Power vs. Chaos, Crit Chance, and Swift Slaying on it. Swift Slaying for the increased attack speed, Crit Chance to proc it, Power vs. Chaos to deal with um, those higher health infantry, as well as those Airy Chaos Warriors, those Maulers, and even the Berserkers. On Legend, this will let you um, one or two shot most things with heavy attack, and, you know, pretty much destroy anything. Um, unarmored with a bunch of light attacks. Pretty nice. And the focus of the build today is the Troll Hammer Torpedo, the slightly new uh, range grenade launcher um, that can absolutely destroy monsters. On it, I run Powers Chaos, Powers Monsters, and Conservative Shooter. You don't have to do this exactly. You can do like Chaos Armor. You can do like Skaven Armor if you really want to. Personally, I like Chaos Monsters because I like to focus on that monster damage. And it might seem strange running conservative shooter on a weapon like this, but it's actually pretty helpful. You know, you're never going to hit every headshot when you're running conservative shooter, because no one's that good, I think. Um, but even if you get like one or two headshots, that's one or two extra shots that you're going to get, pretty much giving you, you know, about the same amount of shots that an engineer would normally get. That's that's pretty well worth, in my opinion. And another thing that's cool about the troll about the troll hammer torpedo is that the, it works with the trait on itself, obviously, but it works with the trait on the trinket as well. So you can run shrapnel for extra damage if you want to do you know sequential shots on a monster, or you can run grenadier, which is a 25% chance not to consume a grenade. Of course, it applies to the troll hammer torpedo, so you just have a 25% chance not to consume a torpedo. And if you hit a headshot with conservative shooter, you'll actually get an extra ammo back. So either running Shrapnel or running Grenadier on the Trinket is really good. It also does work with Explosive Ordnance, by the way, um, but I don't think that one's quite as good as the other two. But they all do work on the Troll Hammer, which I think is pretty fun, honestly. On the Necklace, Health Block Cost Reduction, I run Barkskin on my Iron Breaker simply for, you know, dealing with, like, Warp Fire Throwers, Gun Rats, I don't know, just taking multiple hits in general. Um, but you can do Natural Bond on Iron Breaker. It works pretty good, but if you're going to take Natural Bond, leave the healing for your team, please. Do not drink potions with Natural Bond on it. People will be mad at you. Um, you can ask somebody to wrap you up. That'll give you, you know, green health instead of temp health. But yeah, you're not really supposed to drink healing drafts if you have Natural Bond on. Unless you go down, of course, and it's like an emergency situation. But personally, I'm fond of Barkskin. Bunishalia even would work pretty good. Um, you make pretty good temp health on this weapon. Why not make more? For the charm today, I'm running Chaos Armored and Proxy. Proxy is a very team-oriented uh, potion trait. lets you double the value of potions. Spreading the effect to a nearby ally is quite useful, especially if you have something like a purple or strength potion. Even a speed potion would allow you and a friend to kind of just either run and catch up to a team or run and save somebody. Um, I don't know. They all have their, their uses. Chaos and Armored is just for those, you know, moments when you want to fight the, the patrol um, or just simply try to take out a Chaos Warrior in one shot. Pretty useful. Pretty good. And then finally on the Trinket, for Kata and up, I'm running Cooldown, Reduction, Crit Chance, and Shrapnel. Again, you can run Grenadier or even Explosive Ordnance on your trait here. If you're going to run Legend and Under and go for books, I would recommend losing the... Uh, cooldown reduction because as we talked about earlier you have the rolling mountain the cooldown isn't an absolute necessity that's it for me guys if you like this build um feel free to subscribe to this channel possibly join my discord link will be in the description down below leave a comment let me know what you think about the troll hammer torpedo um just one of those many weapons in the forgotten relics pack i think it's pretty good pretty fun um a little bit worried about the friendly fire sometimes but 
overall, I think it's a pretty cool addition to Ironbreaker and Engineer's arsenal of weapons. Take care, guys.